Hello friends. Uh, so today, na today this is the topic which I have brought for you is the detection of food adulteration in food. That is the adulteration, which is a very common topic or a common thing which is mostly practiced everywhere where you go, be it in food industry or in be it in any any other industry. So, but specifically talking about a food sector, adulteration it's one of the worst enemy we can call to uh, to the entire sector. For the food industry and especially for the human beings, the lives of the human beings, adulteration is uh, is at stake. It it makes the stake. It makes the life of the people at stake. So let let's start with the first slide. Here I have mentioned about what is food adulteration. So as the definition goes, like the food adulteration is the act of degrading the food quality by incidental or in, intentional means. Through the addition of chemicals, extraneous matters, etc., which are called as food adulterants, or the next is the addition or subtraction also of any substance to or from the food, so that the natural composition and the quality of food substance is affected. So these are this is one of the basic definitions, but explaining upon or focusing in a common man's language about the food adulteration. It is like adding anything or also subtraction. First of all, I I will tell you about the addition. So addition uh, of any means. Let us take common example of grains, uh, which is uh, which everyone has at in our home. So grains we always see see and clean the grains for uh, uh, we have doubt for clearing like it may have sawdust or uh, it may have. the particles it may have small stone particles or husk particles so that it may not hamper our health also and the uh, food product like if for example we are preparing wheat for, uh, we, are, we are preparing chapati from wheat so it may not hamper the physical or the other textural properties of chapati so that is uh, that is addition so it might be incidental or i would like to i would also like to say about uh, unintentional unintentional things like uh, adulteration might be also done unintentionally with uh, no with no aim of uh, no deliberate aim of hampering the quality of the food product and uh, subtraction can all we can say that which is uh, which makes uh, the main compound which is present in the or the any of the component which is present in the food 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 uh, any food product it is subtracted and uh, sometimes it is replaced by uh, any other other compounds like if we take example just by saying that uh, any natural component which is very costly for the food industries to prepare so or to add into the food product so to to the in which is a very which makes the food product characteristically important so this product is uh, removed this food component or the ingredient is removed and instead of that it is the uh, it is replaced with some synthetic material if we if we take example of various we have got any synthetic clay or any synthetic uh, uh, synthetic colorants which we call as additives so this is one of the subtraction example to conclude adulteration is addition of adulterants and adulterants is the uh, uh, adulterants are the chemical extraneous matter which uh, which is added to the food product and it can be added intentionally or un- unintentionally so the next slide so uh, then what is the adulterated food so it has got various definitions i will cut short into what i have mentioned in the ppt it is that the uh, it is uh, which is sold uh, by the vendor if we speak on the point of if we talk of, uh, by the point of view of the vendor so we, where the quality of that uh, component or the food product has been uh, has been reduced or has been degraded or it has been replaced with some of the other ingredients into it and next is if the article contains any other substance which affects or if the article is processed as to affect injuriously like uh, uh, if we take next example we have many a times we uh, we come we come across uh, uh, papaya seeds or uh, like glass particles particularly glass particles present in the any of the food uh, food uh, component which uh, either we say it is it is packed in a food uh, packaging material which is based on glass so the glass particles may uh, may 
may be added intentionally or unintentionally not particularly intentionally but unintentionally added into the uh, food uh, food product so that so then this might be injured very injurious to our health also and then uh, next is if any inferior or cheap quality like if the quality expected of the food product is plus uh, is about 10 percent 20 percent but instead in uh, the quality or the raw material which is added to the food product is uh, is lowered like the five percent six percent etc so uh this is what about uh to sum up like uh, what is the adulterated food this has got a uh, more definitions into it uh, like uh, what is the adulterated food and uh, if the fifth if the article had been prepared or packed or kept under insanitary con conditions whereby it has become contaminated like uh, we can keep if the food is kept uh, uh, in uh, is not kept in a closed jar, closed vessel where uh, uh, it might be uh, adulterated or it might be contaminated with insects or any of the chemical uh, or extraneous matter com may come into it while we store it or while we eat it, etc. So next, the main motto for why this PPT that like. Why people are doing adulteration? Why a malpractice like adulteration is practiced every now and then? So the first is lack of original food commodity or the ingredient or the raw material to the processed food of the commodity. Like very, uh, many a times we say that uh, uh, the original food community, uh, commodity is less in number or it is costly. Leaving food apart, we have got gold. We have got, we can take example of gold. So the gold, which is uh, the pure gold, nowadays we also get the customized or the uh, we call as a Bentex. So uh, Bentex gold uh, gold article. So the difference difference is that the original for gold, which is 24 carat, 22 carat. So it is costly and it is also very rare to find. Uh, to find. So uh, to imitate, uh, like yes, the imitation jewelry. To imitate it. We uh, people now produce, uh, we now manufacture imitation, imitation jewelry or the which is prepared from Bentex, the Bentex jewelry. So same is in case of food. The lack of original food com commodity. We can take example of uh, saffron, which is very, uh, which is very rare to find, which is very, very costly, and uh, is due to which uh, the due to due to which the it is uh, it has been substituted by various uh, artificial uh, uh, food food ingredients so that it may uh, it it looks like saffron or any other material which which appears or which tastes like it but it is not the same and next is to desire to attract more customers this point of view is also important we can say that the uh, by adding different colorants by adding different flavoring which are synthetic in nature the, the the product gets good flavor, the product gets good physical appearance due to which more and more customers are uh, attracted and uh, the most uh, the customer feels like buying buying the product and uh, this is one of the other uh, next thing why adulteration is done and uh, as I earlier mentioned in the first point also I gave example of to save the cost of production to use the inferior uh, raw, raw ingredient or raw material so that the cost of production is lowered and uh, to gain the maxim maximum profit profit so in all the malpractice of adulteration rotates or revolves around one point one single point and that is to make huge profit from very less uh, very less uh, very less capital we can say so coming towards adulteration and to start with is milk and milk products first it is a uh, addi uh, add addition of water which is a very common method which is done uh, no, by every uh, uh, every now and then by everyone who sells or who deals with the products which are related to milk and uh, so to detect the ad adulteration of uh, water in milk there are uh, two i think so there are two methods yeah according to me there are two methods which i have uh, specified uh, which i have mentioned in specifically in the presentation that is first is the glass plate method and the another is here the lactometer procedure so the glass plate plate method is like uh, it is uh, it is done with the help of uh, smooth glass plates or we can also say petri plates like we can say petri plates so the thing uh, the procedure here it is that the dropper is uh, 
with the help of proper sample like one or two two ml of sample is taken and then it is placed into the glass plate and uh, the flow of the sample is uh, observed if the uh, if by due to which we can say that the if the milk slow if this uh, milk stays either on the top or moves slowly from the uh, from the uh, from the plate then it is not adulterated and the if the milk flows rapidly like water how the uh, water flows then we can say that the milk is at a is uh, adulterated with water so but the thing is that the this test is not suited to test the adulteration of skim milk the one of the another part of this test uh, next is lactometer procedure so lactometer procedure is uh, it is used with uh, lact the here the one of the safety precautions uh, for the uh, lactometer procedure is that uh, we should handle the lactometers very carefully and uh, also uh, like uh, the thermometers which are uh, which are used uh, for that as mercury mercury is very toxic uh, which are toxic and it has a very uh, in case if the th thermometer breaks so it might be uh, very dangerous to it so lactometer is also uh, la uh, is used in the for a uh, milk testing to check whether the uh, uh, presence of uh, water is there in the milk so here is the procedure like milk sample is, in, is poured into the measuring cylinder about 250 to 500 ml sample is taken and then the lactometer is clean and then the lactometer is dipped into the uh, milk and then uh, if the it sh which we should make sure that the lactometer floats freely it does not touch the sides of the jar and then uh, then towards it is released uh, in the in its position of equilibrium we can uh, this test we can uh, we can say that at 27 degrees celsius it mainly revolves around the specific gravity of milk the lactometer test the specific gravity if it ranges normal non-adulterated milk it ranges between 1.028 to 1.033 so if the values go up and down we can say that yes the milk is adulterated Next is the detection of added glucose. Glucose, as you know, is a sweet, uh, sweet substance, sweet in test, and the main reason of adding glucose into the milk is same, yes, to make the milk sweet, sweet in test. So the the method or the reagents used, I have mentioned the reagents used here, and uh, the procedure is like you have to boil the water and then add Borfeld's reagent into it and heat the mixture for uh, three minutes and then cool down. And also then add the phosphomolybdic acid reagent into the solution and then observe the color. The color change here as you can see in the image the inference we can see the formation of deep blue color uh, after adding of the uh, reagent is that the presence of uh, glucose like the maximum amount of glucose like 0.25% which shows uh, the maximum deep blue color then we can say that uh, there is presence of uh, glucose added glucose into the milk and if the color if we get faint color then we can say that there is no adulteration of uh, milk in milk with the help of glucose next is uh, urea so it is a uh, urea is mainly added to increase the snf value uh, so into the urea is added to the snf value so uh, snf that is a uh, uh, what solid solid non fat solid non fat which is which is present in uh, in milk so solid non-fat mainly consists like protein protein like casein and lactoalbumin and also some carbohydrates mainly lactose which is a uh, milk sugar and some of the minerals like calcium and phosphorus so to increase this amount of the all the snf the urea is added into the milk and the, the main reagent used in a in this method is the dmab uh, dmab reagent it is a chemically uh, chemical uh, chemical constituent which uh, which is uh, which is pronounced as para dimethylaminobenzaldehyde uh, this is the reagent and uh, the test goes like this we have to take 1 ml of sample and uh, add 1 ml of dmab reagent reagent into it and then mix the sample and uh, observe the color change if the it, it, the presence of yellow color is there you can see in the image at the right side the adulterated sample the, if there is a more deep yellow color we can say that the color uh, the milk is adulterated with the urea 
and uh, if no, if there is less or no yellow color formation we can say that there is no ad ad adulteration of urea in the milk here then uh, sodium chloride that is common salt so the common salt is added uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the milk in the aim of uh, uh, increasing the uh, density of the of the milk so uh, also some sometimes it is added to increase the ash content of the uh, uh, ash content of the milk so the re reagents mainly primarily reagents are the silver nitrate and uh, uh, potassium chromate the procedure is like we have to take 5 ml of milk sample and add 1, one ml of 0.1 normal so silver nitrate solution into it then we have to mix it then we have to add 0.5 ml of 10% potassium chromate solution and observe the color change here the inference is that the yellow color indicates the presence of dissolved chloride that is the presence of salt if there is a red color you can see in this image if the presence of red color then we can say that the milk is not adulterated with the uh, with the sodium chloride or no other salt is added into it and if uh, if there is uh, if there is presence of yellow color as we can see in the then we can say the milk is adulterated with the with the with the urea next is the detection of one spati ghee or hydrogenated fat in milk and this is done to yes all uh, we all know that this is mainly done to increase the uh, fat content or the uh, in the milk and uh, this is done with the help of rose gottlieb method which is commonly known as rose gottlieb method this method is used where uh, one and the reagent uses the 1% sucrose is added into the concentrated hydrochloric acid the then the milk is separated milk uh, milk extract from the milk is separated by rose gottlieb method uh, which is for, described further and then it is done and then addition of 1 ml sucrose in hcl is done and it is mixed uh, it is allowed to stand and if the presence of uh, pink color or the develop if the pink color develops we can indicate that there any presence of vanaspati or sesame oil is present in milk here it is the uh, here you can see the image of butera refractometer which is required for that so detection of detergents the detergents are mainly added to prevent curdling that is which mainly deals with increasing the shelf life of the milk Sometimes it is also added to increase the fat content and uh, but the one of the dangerous effects of adding detergents in milk is that the damage of intestinal tract and digestive system of the human being. The reagent used is bromocrisol purple and the procedure goes like this that milk sample is added to the test tube and then bromocrisol purple solution is added and the presence of color, or color of the, and the color is observed. So inference is that the violet color purple color indicates presence of detergent of, uh, in milk and if, if there is a faint violet color then there is no uh, there is no detergent in the milk to check whether the next test is for the addition addition of smp that is skim milk powder in the natural milk uh, it is it is done with the help of uh, reagents using like concentrated hno3 where the 5 ml sample is added uh, 5 ml milk sample is added with uh, some drops of HNO3 uh, using the pasture pipette and then it is uh, it is observed for the development of yellow or orange color and if there is a presence of orange color it indicates that the SMP is present in the milk and if there is no present uh, no SMP in the milk the color is yellow various preservatives are added to the milk mainly the preserve addition of the the main motto of addition of preservatives in the milk is to uh, detect the, uh, to increase the shelf life where uh, you can see here that formalin some of the preservatives added is formalin hydrogen peroxide and mercury chloride these are the some of the preservatives so uh, formal formalin is uh, is for the formation of violet or blue ring is uh, at the junction of indicate indicates the formal formalin is present in the milk where the and if there is a green or brown color formation then there is no formalin present into it next you can you can uh, you, uh, you can if you want to read the entire procedure you can pause the video and you can see the uh, procedure which is there in the which i have mentioned in the presentation i will not uh, explain it. next is the hydrogen peroxide in milk the directly i will come to the inference like 
if the other milk is adulterated with hydrogen peroxide then uh, there is a deep blue color and if there is no color formation or no color change in the milk then it, there is no presence of hydrogen peroxide mm -hmm. next is uh, mercury acid det uh, detection of mercury chloride mercury chloride here there is formation of P, uh, silky uh, silky white ppt then afterwards it, it turns green uh, gray in color uh, after addition of essential to cl2 solution and which which detects that uh, which which confirms that there is a presence of mercury chloride in the milk and if there is no ppt formation or there is if there is no precipitate visible in the milk then we can say that the milk is not a uh, milk is not adulterated next coming towards uh, one of the second major commodities which is widely consumed and which is widely needed in every field in the food industry and that is the oils so to first of all to check the detection of rancidity whether the oil or the ghee which we use is rancid or not we uh, the reagents use is the point point one percent poroglucinol in diethyl ether solution and the next is concentrated HCl. Uh, the inference is that if the milk uh, sorry not milk if the oil is adulterated or oil is rancid a red or pink color uh, color acid layer formica formation is there and by which we can say that the oil or the fat is rancid and if there is no color present uh, formation then the oil is not rancid detection of cotton seed oil the cotton seed oil is added into uh, into the normal oil like it provides a solid fat index like it gives good uh, fat index into it and uh, which is uh, mainly used, uh, used in baked goods which makes it uh, moist and gives moist and chewy texture it also gives a uh, good uh, produces good amount good quality of uh, whipped cream and uh, cottonseed oil is also used in many fast food chains for deep frying because it enhances the flavor of the food but uh, yes this is the reason next the procedure I, which you can see the procedures and chemical present uh, reagents required for that the inference is that the red color if it is present then it is indicate in, indicates that the presence of cotton seed oil in the and if it is not then it is not present mineral oil in the oil this uh, mineral oil uh, is added because the vegetable oil which is used is uh, poor in performance at high temperature which uh, which uh, and it is where it is more prone to oxidation and the rancidity so uh, the fatty acid content in vegetables may significantly reduce so to optimize this uh, to increase the frictional coefficient uh, the uh, mineral oil is added into the oil uh, in the common oil or the vegetable oil here you can see the uh, procedure apparatus required and the reagents the inference is uh, and the in in inference is that uh, any turbidity so if there is a turbidity then it shows that mineral oil is present in more, more than one percent and the turbidity depends upon obviously it will depend upon the percentage of the mineral oil and if there is no turbidity we get a clear oil then we can say that the oil is not adulterated with milk next is castor oil the castor oil is uh, added to uh, is, is added to the milk uh, sorry not milk it is added to the oil nowadays and the uh, main it affects the fatty acid present present in the vegetable oil and if there is a turbidity in the turbidity we can say that there is a presence of castor oil and if we, if we get transparent solution from the sample we can say there is presence of there is not there is no castor oil present in the oil next is the karanja oil karanja is a uh, it, it is added to the oil uh, like the in, it is uh, it has good amount huge amount of trans fat which is not good for our uh, for our health which may also uh, which may also lead to other types of infection and cancers and especially the heart problems so uh, this is uh, this is added to the vegetable oil in, in case of adulteration and if the presence of canary yellow or orange color is there in the solution with the which is treated with the sample then we can say that the karanja oil is present and if it is not then it is absent coconut oil is also nowadays added into the vegetable oil and uh, pure coconut oil uh, like we we can uh, we have a common example in winters like common the 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 solidifying of the coconut oil in uh, which we use in our home 
so this is the same case in uh, to detect the adulteration of coconut oil in the vegetable oil also if there is a solidification we can say that there is a presence of uh, solidification is there and there is a separate layer forms and if there is no separate layer formation no solidification then we can say that oil is not adulterated with coconut oil next coming towards spices and condiments first is the color like bright the color and lead chromate in turmeric powder so it is added to give good wholesome color to attract the customers and uh, but the addition of uh, lead chromate uh, is uh, very dangerous to our uh, our health and uh, it is the use done with the help of using two reagents that is uh, 1h27h2so4 and uh, next is the diphenyl carboxide uh, reagent and if there is presence of pink color we can say that the there is a presence of lead chromate next is methanol yellow again it is used for the colorants uh, to mimic the appearance of curcumin but it is uh, toxic and it may lead to cancer in human beings uh, in the presence of pink or violet color uh, in the adult in the solution is uh, presence of uh, presence of uh, presence of uh, methanol yellow in the uh, turban next is chalk powder which is most common adulterant in turmeric powder we can easily do it with the help of uh, uh, hcl and if there is a effervescence we can uh, it indicates the presence of chalk powder then addition of uh, detection of brick powder in chili the brick powder in chili is done to give it it has got good uh, if it is grind properly it gets similar texture and color as out of as that of chili powder the reagent uses the chloroform and carbon tetrachloride mixture and if the brick powder settles if if anything anything settle if we take the sample in the uh, uh, if we take red chili sample powder sample we add chloroform or carbon tetrachloride mixture into it and uh, allow it to stand and then afterwards if we set some of the there is a sedimentation of any particles we can say that the, these particles are brick powder or any other dirt and by which we can detect the adulteration of brick powder in chili detection of rhodomine b it is also uh, uh, it is also used as a colorant but uh, in uh, uh, this is a by product rhodomine b is a by product well, of during the extraction of chili oil and uh, the immediate appearance of red color is uh, tells us that rhodomine b is present in it next is papaya seeds as we all know papaya seeds and black pepper have got uh, so somewhat same texture so it get camouflaged in the uh, uh, the papaya seeds gets camouflaged in the black paper due to which we cannot detect it but the procedure here uh, as you can see you uh, the procedure is here i have mentioned the procedure coming towards the inference if the blue color is in, is there we can say that uh, it is the presence of starch and pale color indicates like it uh, starch is related to uh, uh, it, and if pale color indicates it is papaya uh, due to presence of dextrin and uh, yes here some extra information is that papaya is a dicot which is a thin line partition shows two cotyledons and papaya paper is uh, monocot difference between papaya and paper so black paper is a monocot which is uh, the seed halves will show halves will show will show a central hole into it then detection of chalk powder in asafoetida asafoetida which is uh, commonly which is known as hing in uh, in many languages so <clears throat> so this is about the spices now other foods like uh, detection of chalk powder and washing powder in sugar wheat flour ice cream etc so this is done with the help of using uh, lime water and dilute hcl and if there is a presence of effervescence we as we all know lime water tends to effervescence so if the, there is a presence of effervescence into it we can, then we can say that there is presence of chalk powder or washing soda into it <coughs> into the food food product next is metanin yellow or para in parboiled rice pulses etc which is also colorant if the reagent used is the concentrated hcl and if there is a development of pink color in the uh, in the solution then we can say that metanin yellow dye is present in the parboiled rice or any of the food products mentioned above next is sand and dirt which is um, which is a uh, most frequent and we can see that most common like uh, everyone faces this type of adulteration or is uh, is known about this type of adulteration right from our home scale so this is done with the help of measuring cylinder and the reagent uses carbon tetrachloride and uh, 
the, the, this is done with the help of principle of sedimentation that the sand and the other dirt particles or filth we can call is uh, is set, settles down settle down in the bottom of the beaker due to which we can we can detect it iron fillings in tea it also camouflage it also has the same appearance as that of tea powder or tea leaves so iron fillings are added into it and it is separation it is separated or it is detectedly purely based on the mag magnetization for principle the for it is the bar magnet is uh, spray is uh, spray the run over the tea sample and if the, the there there are iron fillings that is the bar magnet attracts and it is separated then artificially colored tea dust with uh, genuine tea powder it is done with the help of uh, filter paper the inference is that pink or red color on the filter paper shows that the color tea uh, color is used and if there is no color uh, pink or uh, red color then there is no uh, artificial color used in the tea malachite green is also uh, malachite green it is uh, used it is also one of the other colorants which is commonly uh, nowadays we can see it in the peas uh, which green peas which we get in the market for green fresh peas so this is widely used into it so the reagents and you can see the main reagent used is the liquid paraffin and the inference is that if the green color impression is there on the paper then we can say that the presence of malachite green is there and also the next is cotton ball uh, if we talk i i told about the peas the malachite green color is uh, the water if we add peas into the water the water gets some green color so more darker green color as compared to normal one and we can say that the uh, malachite green color is present in the green vegetables next is addition of uh, invert sugar so invert sugar syrup is uh, in honey this taste is also known as a uh, freeze taste so flavor and color development uh, it is uh, development invert syrups have higher tendency to develop color and uh, it is mainly used as a colorant but also uh, due for a good textural property and uh, if there is a pink to cherry red color present in the invert sugar uh, so sorry in the honey so honey solution which is treated with the help of a resocrinol reagent and the diethyl ether then we can say that there is a presence of your invert sugar into it so that's all so if you have if you like uh, if you have got the uh, got what i have explained if you have loved the uh, presentation or if you liked it if you understand uh, if you have understood everything which i have told please do like and subscribe subscribe the channel and share maximum so that the uh, so that it can benefit everyone thank you